welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I share all about my making adventures. So today is June 23rd. It is 9.21 a.m. I have got my coffee and my Summer Sock Camp mug. Still loving it so much. I am surrounded, like literally surrounded. There's stuff everywhere. I have to step over piles <laughs> to get out of here. It's going to be a long one today. So I hope you have your coffee or whatever beverage you are choosing to drink today. You have something to work on. Or maybe you're on the treadmill or you're cleaning. I don't know. I hope you've got something you're doing. And maybe you're just relaxing and watching. That is great as well. But yeah, settle in. Settle in because... I've finished a couple of things. I've worked on a million things, started approximately a million things. <laughs> Basically, there's just a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. So you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. And I will have links down below this video in the description box, which sometimes people have trouble finding. So if you are looking at this on your phone, your computer, your iPad, right down below the video, you'll see like the title of the video. And then there will be like where it starts a description and it'll either say more or show more, read more, something along those lines. Just hit that and it pulls the description box down for the video. That's where I'll have links to everywhere that you can find me, links to any shops that I talk about, links to Ravelry project pages. All of that's gonna be right down there for you. So, we have a couple finished objects, like I said. Lots of works in progress. So many. I talked, or I posted on my Instagram stories mid last week-ish, I think. It was sometime in last week that I had sat down and kind of planned out my knitting. Not super strict, but just planned out as far as I want to pull out some lingering projects and work on those and give them some love and attention. And I asked if you guys would be interested and there was just an overwhelming response of yes. So we're going to chat about that for a super short amount of time because I'll just show you what I kind of did and talk about that. So we will talk about that. I'll show all the works in progress. We have some mail that has came, some prizes. We're going to do a giveaway this episode. So I hope you guys are excited. All right, let's just start with finished objects as usual. So I did finish Lily's socks. I will put a picture up here of all of these socks that I did out of this yarn. I knit three pairs of gift socks, um, one for my sister Cassie, one for my niece Lily, um, and then the other one, I don't want to spoil any surprises, so I will not say who those are for, but these were out of Pearl Talk is the company that dyed the yarn. The colorway is, the main colorway is Bordeaux Speckle, and then there was six mini skeins in the set, I believe that's correct, and those were Blind Love. So for Lily, she is my niece, she is almost eight, and I do 60 stitches for her socks. I did Knit 2 Pearl 2 for the cuff, 15 rounds, and just knit down for those. I did the minis. Oh gosh, how many rounds did I do now? I think I did eight rounds. It's on the Ravelry page. Four, six. I think that's eight. These fade so well together, it can be hard to differentiate between some of these. But anyways, it is on the Ravelry Project page if you are interested in exactly how many rounds I did for these. Pretty sure it was eight and then eight for the foot as well. And then the toe, I ran out of the main skein. I used up every last bit of it for these. And then the toe, I just used minis and striped them in. just whoops from the leftovers of the mini skeins so that is those they are gonna go in I have ziploc bags over here with names on them of gift socks that I am kind of doing them and setting them aside for birthday gifts Christmas gifts trying to get a little bit ahead on some of my gift knitting for the rest of this year 
My other one I do not have right here to show you because it is hanging up on the wall in my living room. I finally finished, if you've been around for a while, <laughs> the You Are My Sunshine cross stitch that I've been working on for I don't know how long. I did not write down anywhere that I can find when I started that. I have now started on the next one. I wrote down the start date on the pattern so that I will know. I didn't do that on that one. Um, but yes, anyways, I finished this. I finished, oh, start and finish dates on Lily's socks. Started them June 12th, finished them June 15th. So they were pretty quick. The cross stitch. I finished it on June 18th. Eric hung it up. I framed it. Eric hung it up on June 19th. And I will have some pictures up here for you to see this. I have, this was just a kit that I had purchased. I don't remember exactly where, but I did find that it is available on Amazon. So I have it linked in my Amazon storefront. The link for that will be down below. It was so much fun to do. It was kind of, I had to watch when I worked on it with that black <laughs> fabric. I do have a, a light in the living room, but sometimes it puts a glare on the TV and I don't always like having that bright light on or using my neck light or anything. So I worked on this mostly during the day and this kind of came into the planning my, I guess I shouldn't say planning my knitting. I just planned my making because I am including cross stitch in that. And I am trying to plan, I'll talk about it more, but for cross stitch, at least 30 minutes a day. If I want to do an hour, if I want to do longer, I let myself. I don't stick to, you know, it has to be just this much and then I'm done. If I want to do more, I do. And that is what happened with this. I was so close to finishing it that on June 18th, I was like, I am just finishing this. I'm just getting it done. I'm so close. And I'm so glad that I did that and it is done and I love it. The wall that it is on, my dream for this wall is to have it just full of cross stitch pictures that I have completed. I have two there right now. And these will be smaller ones. I mean, the one that I just completed is framed in an eight by 10 frame. I could have done a little smaller, but I just went ahead and did an eight by 10 because that is what I had here on hand at the house. So I did not even have to go out and purchase a new frame, which was nice. Um, but yes, I have a ton of little cross stitch kits. I have a thing for buying cross stitch kits. I. I have dreams of just all of these things I want to cross stitch, hence why I'm planning it in so that it gets done. Um, but yes, the dream is to have some of these little smaller cross stitch pictures all framed and on this wall. Lord willing, we'll be in this house for at least four more years until Wyatt is out of high school. So we'll see how many I can get done in those four years. All the ones I have plans to do are for this wall are small. So if I actually am working on things, they should not take, you know, I should get them done. It's just the actual working on it because I tend to just knit <laughs> all the, all the socks. <laughs> okay. So I don't really think there was much else to say about that. I'm very pleased with how it came out. Um, planning my knitting. We'll talk about that for, like I said, I'm not going to, it's, be a huge long segment on it but I did want to just touch base on how I'm doing it before we go into works in progress so I just have this notebook I had used it for a couple of things previously I just ripped those pages out I don't know where I got this if it all focus it says primitives by Kathy on the back so I don't know if that's a website. I feel like I just picked this up in a shop somewhere, I think. Um, but I went in, this was like the first week that I did this. And this was only a partial week. I started this, um, writing these things out on Thursday of that week, last week. So up at the top, I put the dates for the week. Um, and what I wanted to work on that week, just listed out the projects. And then I went through day by day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because I'm going to be doing this Monday through Sunday. And I wrote down what I wanted to try to accomplish each day. And I'm not like, oh, if I don't finish these, you know, that's the end of the world. It is fine <laughs> if I don't finish what I want to accomplish. But this just kind of helps keep me on track because I do have a lot of works in progress that are lingering that are advent projects or scrappy blankets or I have a made well sweater I started and I would kind of like to work through some of these because I do love them and enjoy working on them. For me a lot of the times it's just out of sight out of mind and I get distracted by shiny things. 
new projects and so that's just t what tends to happen I cannot take credit for this project and I always feel like we should give or for this planning and I always feel like we should give credit where it is due so Natalie of Nitty Natty talks about how she does this a lot so I definitely suggest following her if you want you know great details on how to plan your knitting because she's so so good at it but this is just kind of me taking that and then trying to figure out what works for me and it's going to be a little bit of a work in progress itself to try to figure out how planning out my knitting works best for me um right now i've just been doing a lot of lingering whips so this is the week spread for this week and i did the same thing just the date at the top wrote down the projects i wanted to work on throughout the week and then just broke it down day by day and wrote down what I wanted to try to do each day. So on like Monday of this week I wanted to do two days on my temperature blanket, at least 30 minutes on my cross stitch, one mini into my DK weight jelly roll and one mini into my cozy comfort throw and then I had wrote down a sock whip to try to work on a little bit as well. And I did accomplish all of that on Monday. Yesterday I did not accomplish everything the day before that. I did not accomplish everything. So it is fine if it doesn't. And it'll kind of change as I go because I have, I'm getting ready to start Lily's sweater. And we'll talk about that in whips. Um, so that's going to be moved to like top priority with the knitting planning. But then I do want to, when I can, try to pull out these lingering whips that I have and work a little bit on them, make sure I'm staying caught up on my temperature blanket, etc. So this is just kind of really for me, it is keeping these things where I can see them. They're still in projects bags in a basket, but if they are wrote down here that I would like to work on them for the week, I will see them. <laughs> So this is what I'm going to be, you know, trying to add into my knitting time here, I guess, is just focusing, not, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not going to be super strict with it, but just so that I see these, they are, you know, there and I'm like, okay, yes, you do have that work in progress that you want to work on as well. So that's just kind of how that is. And then I do want to, with things like Lily's sweater that I have a deadline for, kind of work that out a little bit. And Natalie is a great person to follow for that as well. Um, she's great about wanting to have something done by a certain date and figuring out what she needs to accomplish each day to have that done by that date. So I want to do that with Lily's, Lily's sweater. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'll keep you updated. <laughs> okay, so works in progress. So many things have been worked on and I brought them all to show you every single one of them. So first I will show you my new cross stitch picture. Well, it's not really a picture. It's a Christmas ornament that I started. I've just been keeping this in a, I think it's a longer burger basket. Yep. Um, yeah, just keeping this in here on a shelf upstairs in the corner of my living room. This is another kit but all of my cross stitches are. And I also linked this one on my Amazon storefront as well. So this, let's see if you'll be able to see that. There we go. Sweet little Christmas ornament. I have so many dreams with cross stitch. I have the wall of all the cross stitch pictures. I have a Christmas tree with all handmade ornaments one day one day I don't have a ton done on this but I mean I guess I have a decent I mean I've been working on it every day other than yesterday since I started it I started this on Monday it's just that you can just barely tell it's the door there is the little wreath there it's so sweet but it, it's so tiny <laughs> it's so tiny I have never done a cross stitch that is like the stitches are this small, ever. I don't think, not that I recall. I've, I've finished a few cross stitches over the years, a handful or two of them, never one with this small of stitches. This is on a like plastic canvas and then it does have, there's some beads and things to add, but then it does have a backing for it that you, I think it, you match or stitch it together or something like that with beads that'll go around the edge. Um, so yeah, 
it has started. It has started. <laughs> That's about all there is to show on it. So the kit did come with those two things I just showed you, the plastic canvas, the backing. Here is all the thread. It came with the beads, the needles, all of that is included. And I can't remember if I said, but it is linked on my Amazon storefront. I did purchase or find it to purchase on there. That one I know I purchased off of Zulily. It's an app that has a, a variety of things, clothes, shoes, home goods. Sometimes they will have craft stuff on there, knitting, crochet, cross stitch, painting. So if I see those pop up, sometimes I will buy them. <laughs> um, so that's the cross stitch. Hopefully there will be more to show next week on that. My vanilla on the go socks have had a little bit of work. This is in a bag that was a gift from a viewer. And I can't remember, I don't remember if I had the first one done last week or not. I do not remember at all. But here's the first one. Actually, I don't think I did now that I think about it. Pretty sure I finished this on Saturday or Sunday. There's the first one. This is Regia Perfect. The Arnie and Carlos design line with them. I don't think that wants to focus very well today. The color number is 09138. And I have the second one going. I just love these <laughs> Russia Fairfix. They're so much fun. So I'm knitting these on nine inch circulars. Chow Goo US Zero, two millimeter, cast on 64 stitches, and did knit two pearl two ribbing for the cuff. And that's about it for those. Those just stay in my purse. I work on them at appointments or if I'm waiting on a kid somewhere or I am not the driver in the car, which is always nice. Maybe they'll be done by next time. We'll see. Okay. So then the planning with the knitting, I've been trying to do 30 minutes on the cross stitch a day at least. I've also been getting caught up on my temperature blanket. I am caught up. I still need to do yesterday's, um, but that's what I'll do today. But I was trying to do two days on it every day to get caught up. And I did. So I have this in a bag from Barley Pearls. Fun bag with all the different weather things on there. And this blanket... I have full details on my Ravelry project page for how I am doing it. I am not following a pattern. It's just, I'm just knitting it and I have notes for how I'm doing everything. And the episode where I talk in more detail about it is linked on that Ravelry project page. But here it is, an updated peek at it. Down there is where I started on January 1st. And the last day I added was the day before yesterday. So that would be June 21st. So there's the start of June. I do these eyelets in between the months. So that is June right here. So fun. And the crazy temperature <laughs> temperatures here in Ohio where it is 60 some one day and 80 the next. It makes for a super fun blanket. I'm still really enjoying this. I'm glad to be caught up. I'm hoping to stay caught up as much as I can. Obviously, you know, if we go out of town, we have some, some trips coming up, um, things like that, then I will get off then. This is not a good travel project because there are so many skeins down in here, but yeah, it's a fun one. I, want, I haven't shown you guys that in a while, so I wanted to show you guys what it is looking like. It's kind of outgrowing the bag, to be honest. I could take some of the yarn out, but again, our temperatures can fluctuate so much that I keep a variety in there, so I'm not constantly running down to grab the yarn that I need. But it is already outgrowing that, which is crazy. So now I'm just doing one day. A day on that which is two rows doesn't take not even 11 minutes I timed myself and that doesn't even take 11 minutes 
so it's so quick to get those done. Another project I have been working on, focusing on a bit again, is one of my advent projects from 2022. And this is my Cozy Comfort Throw, which is a pattern by Molly of a homespun house. I have it in a bag from Knitting Broomstick is the Etsy shop. Her Instagram is Mom of Six Stitches from Jilly. Fun Christmas bag for my ad, one of my advent projects. And this is using the Polka Dot Creek Grinch Advent. And if you watch Vlogmas of last year, you'll have seen me open these. But they came in these cute boxes. I think that's upside. Nope, that wasn't. A Grinch themed advent. Polka Dot Creek put this together, but it was all different Canadian yarn dyers. And the Cozy Comfort Throw uses, well, I mean, you could use any yarn, but uses mini skeins. And then you're holding it double with just a bare yarn. And I am on, I just added in day 15 of the advent. And there are 25 days. Yes, couldn't remember if there were 24 or 25. There are 25 days. So today I will hopefully add in day 16. Hopefully I'll have time today to get that added in. But here is what it is looking like. Can you see all of that? And I was, where's my marker at? Was I showing you the back? I think I was showing you the back. It doesn't really matter, but let's get everything situated again here. That is the front. I was down here. That is the last one I added in whenever I worked on it last. So since I picked this back up last week to work on, I have started with this one and I've added in all of those. I am just weaving my ends in as I go. I have a tutorial for how I do that here on YouTube. So that's just how I'm doing these and it's working great so far. Not having any issues with it. I'm using Chowgu needles. A US 9 5.5 millimeter. It is such a nice squishy blanket. Let's see. DK Weight Jelly Roll, I'm also working on every day that I can doing one mini trying to get my minis because this is one that I use my row one minis which is a mini skein subscription service I'll link them below and then my homespun house patreon minis that I get each month those are two things I get monthly so I'm using those up in this they're fingering weight mini skeins and this is a fingering weight pattern but I'm holding them double to get more of a DK weight gauge and I do have notes on my Ravelry project page for any changes I made in this pattern. So last time you saw this, I was, I had finished that. So since then I've added these two and finished off the fourth column. Pull this up here so you can see all of that. And I've started the fifth column. This is the mini I added in this morning. This has been my 30 minutes of knitting. That's about how long it takes me to add in one of these minis. So that's what I've been doing. I'm using a signature Needle Arts Straight Needles, a US 5, 3.75 millimeter. And I really enjoy this one. It doesn't, like I said, it takes 30 minutes for me to add a one of the minis in. So it doesn't take long. It's again, such a squishy blanket because of that fingering weight held double. So nice. And this is in a bag 
that I got from a homespun house. It's Knitting Unicorns is who makes her bags. And this is outgrowing this as well. I'm going to have to get out some of my um, bags by Awesome Granny and Fat Squirrel bags. They're the ones that I have the largest bags, I think, from. The only, like, really large bags, I think. So I'm going to have to get those out and switch some of these blankets over as they keep growing. All right, now I have socks and then we're gonna chat about Lily's sweater, which I haven't cast on yet, but I'm actually gauge swatching for, so we'll chat about that. So these are all new sock cast-ons since the last episode. This is in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. This is using the June Yarnable One Sock Done. Turned out so good. So happy with this one. I'm doing the Whispers in the Wind pattern, which is one of mine. And Oh, it's such a nice one. I haven't done this in ages and I forgot just how much I like it. I have tutorials for the special crossed stitch that is in it and it is just such an enjoyable pattern if I do say so myself. <laughs> I did a contrast heel and toe. So the yarns that came in my June Yarnable, I have the Pollen Party is the main skein. It's a beautiful blue with some speckles. And then I think this is Cherry Blossom. Cherry Blossom Bliss is this gorgeous pinky red. So fun. So first one done. Second one is on the leg. I have not worked on this in a couple of days. but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Doing this on Chowgu US1, 2.25 millimeter, 32 inch for Magic Loop. Next new cast on, in another bag by Mountain State Stitches. This was one of our sock camp bags from last year. And this is using Mountain State Stitches yarn as well that is all tangled up on itself here around the cable. Oh no, there we go. This hasn't even been touched. How does this happen when I have not even touched this? It has been in the project bag. Okay, so this is a sock set from Mountain State Stitches called Sweet Nothing. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I have started a pair of ribbed socks. I don't know if I've updated my project page with counts on this yet, but I will. The row counts for the stripes. But I cast on 64 stitches. I'm just doing a knit two purl two rib all the way down. On a US 1, 2.25 millimeter. I think I did, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten rounds at the top. And then the pink stripes are five rounds. And there are three rounds in between the pink stripe of the main collar. So I will do the rest of the sock in the main collar, probably heel and toe in the pink, is what I'm thinking. We'll see. These have, I cast them on and did this and that's as far as I've gotten. I just could not wait to cast on that yarn. It is so pretty. <laughs> Last new sock cast on. <laughs> this is in a bag by Stitched Below. Super fun sock fabric. And I got in the mail, a sock set from Whitney of Moonglow, her Sparkle Pop sock set. There's her tag. And I will put a picture of it here, looking just so pretty laid out. 
I won't take all the minis out and try to hold them up. I'll just put the picture up. Um, but these are literally just cast on. That's it. Like, I mean, I've done five or so rounds probably, but they are just started. That's all I got. I'm going to do scrappy stripy socks. You probably could have already guessed that. <laughs> scrappy stripy socks and probably two pairs. For these, I will probably do a pair for myself and then a pair for my mother-in-law is what I'm thinking. So I've cast on 64 stitches, knit two purl, two rib, just working on the cuff. US zero, two millimeter, Chalgu nine inch. And all the Chalgu needles are linked on my Amazon storefront. And the signature needles that I'm using for the blanket that I showed are linked down below the video. So that's all for that. It's really not much to show just yet but I can't wait to get going on those. I, you'll see here in a bit, I'm just in a red, white, and blue mood. Fourth of July is coming and I love it so much. And I'm just in, in that mood when it comes to what I want to knit surrounding the 4th of July. I can't wait. Okay, so Lily's sweater, I've not cast on, but I want to show you the bag it's in. And then also um, talk about the swatch, because I am doing a swatch. So this bag is another bag by Stitched Below. She did this, this was, I think a Mother's Day pre-order. And I couldn't resist. It is so gorgeous. There's a pocket here. And then you have the zipper pocket. There's also a pocket on the inside and then it has handles, but it's also got drawstring, which you could tuck down inside and just use it as kind of a tote bag without the drawstring as well. I'm obsessed with it. It's got all five skeins of yarn in there. And I think I have plenty of room for Lily's sweater throughout the process of making it. So I have showed before I'm going to be doing the film reel for children by Elena Nodell, correct? Yes, Elena Nodell. And I decided to gauge swatch. So I had Cassie measure Lily when they got back from vacation. I've got that measurement. I've looked through the pattern, decided on a size that will work, but I, I don't gauge swatch. Don't yell at me. I'm an adult and I will deal with the consequences of my actions. <laughs> Um, but I don't ever gauge swatch. I have before, but I, I don't like, I just don't like it. It stresses me out more than knitting a pattern and the finished item not fitting because I'm a process knitter. So if I knit something that doesn't fit, I will just find somebody else that it will fit. Like I, that does not stress me out at all. And everybody is different on that and has their own ways of viewing things and doing things. And that is a okay. I just... I would rather not be stressed about a cage swatch and just knit the item because for me, the joy comes in the knitting. Yes, I enjoy wearing things that I finish, but that's not where I get the core part of the joy, I guess. I don't know. So I don't gauge swatch. But when it comes to knitting stuff for Lily, I think I, I've probably gauge swatched in the past for things for her. I honestly do not remember. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but... I am kind of like, okay, she gets so excited about things that I make her and she wants to wear them to school and show them off. And I thought she's getting to that age where she does care more about what she wears and how it looks on her and fits on her and all of the things. So I'm like, you should probably gauge swatch because what if you knit it and it's just like, she doesn't like how tight it is or, I mean, I would rather it be too big and she can grow into it. And I think that's like the side that the sweaters I've knit her have always lent is that they are too big and not like massively too big, but they're on the bigger end of things, which is great because she's a growing girl. But yeah, I'm just worried it would be, end up being way too small. So I'm like, I'm going to gauge swatch. I did a gauge swatch yesterday. I have plenty of yarn. Um, so I went ahead and did a gauge swatch yesterday. Here it is. I did it out of the lightest color, which is going to get majorly blown out. Such a pretty pink. Um, it's off. 
I'm gonna have to do another one with go up a needle size and see what that is and then decide what I'm going to do so instead of getting 22 stitches and four inches I have 25 and a half and my row gauge is way off but that's an easier fix than your stitch gauge <laughs> when the pattern just tells you to knit till x amount of inches or things and the pattern it does with the gradient the stripes it does tell you how to figure out with your row gauge how many rows you're going to need per stripe so that's a super easy adjustment i'm not as worried about the row gauge i never am on a pattern well i guess i'm not really worried about any gauge because i never gauge swatch <laughs> um but yeah i'm going to today grab a larger needle size this was on a us4 I do feel like I tend to be a tighter knitter when I'm knitting back and forth versus in the round. I'm always a looser knitter in the round. So I kind of thought I, as soon as I started knitting the swatch, I'm like, I feel like I'm going to have to go up a needle size. I do really like the fabric that I'm getting with this though. So that's where I'm going to have to decide once I do the next swatch, see what my gauge is, see what the fabric is, because I don't want it way too loose and the stitches to seem too holy and so we'll see i'm gonna get swatch being a good girl gonna do another one it didn't take me that long wasn't that torturous but this is the part where i stress because i'm like oh my gosh my gauge wasn't on spot on so now i have to do another one and what if that one's not spot on i don't like gauge swatching guys <laughs> i'm telling myself it will be worth it in the end when the sweaters that when the sweater fits her. Goodness, I need more coffee today. This is only my second cup. I need more coffee. Okay, so that's all I've got for works in progress. I mean, that's all. That was a ton of works in progress. Are y'all still here? Are you still watching? <laughs> I have a lot of mail too. Oh, I didn't put my needle up. That would be bad if I lost it. All right, mail. I've had some things arrive. I showed you some of them. So the stitched below bags have arrived since the last episode. Let me go ahead and show you the rest of what arrived. So she sent over, these are still in their packaging, it is bags that have camper themed fabric on them so fun she sent this one for me it was a drawstring box bottom bag and then she sent this one we're going to use this as a summer sock camp giveaway it's got a, some little goodies inside of here over here as well so we'll use this for summer sock camp and with the project bag i also ordered the notions pouch to match this one I couldn't resist I love you guys know I love this color and I love florals it was just the perfect match love the rose gold zipper she's got on there great size for a notions pouch I should put all the sweater notions in there but I just haven't yet because it was it was buried down here under all the mail so that was the rest of my stitch below order and then the extra little goodies she sent for camp and for me yesterday in the mail i got some yarn from nicole c mendez she sent over some yarn for prizes we're going to use these for summer sock camp and then she said to that i could keep one as well so i decided she sent two fingering weight and two dk i decided i'm going to keep this one because i think lily would adore socks out of this so here's nicole's logo and then this is the pinata colorway look how amazing that is so yeah these are going to be socks for lily I think she will love it. This is on Nicole's Soft Sock, which is 80% super, I'm sorry, 80% virgin wool merino extra fine. I'm so used to saying 80% superwash merino. 20% <laughs> nylon, 100 grams, 437 yards. And then on the same base, she sent her Coffee Break colorway. And then the two DK, the DK is the same 80 20 
blend but is on a DK base. She sent Night Owl. This one is so pretty, so moody. I love it. And Early Bird. I did receive my Homespun House Patreon minis for May. So if you have not received yours yet and you don't want to be spoiled, just look away for a minute. I will just show them really quickly. Love these. So these are what I am doing in my DK Weight Jelly Roll. So I will just hold these double and add them in. received a goodie package oh I need to show I have some I'm like oh I have a goodie package but I've already taken some of it out and I'm using it and forgot to show it from twice sheared sheep so I have them linked down below it is an affiliate link and all that means if you ever see me say or a post that says it's an affiliate link is that at no extra cost to you I receive a small percentage of a commission for you using my link to purchase. So I've been sharing their sock rulers, the slap bracelet sock rulers that I'm loving putting down in my project bags. So they sent me over a little goodie package with one more sock ruler, which I feel like I can never have enough of a tool. Once I find one that I'm using all the time, I feel like I can't have enough of it, especially a sock tool because I usually have multiple socks going at once. I mean, you just saw what, four pairs? One, two, three, four pairs of socks on the go, I think. And I have another scrappy pair upstairs, so it's not all the sock whips. <laughs> but yeah, once I find something, I need it in everything. So they sent me over another sock roller. They sent me a couple Notions tins. Let me pull out the other one here. I put it down inside of Lily's sweater. So this one has a sunflower and a ladybug on it. I love it. My sunflowers are looking so good outside. I'll have to do, I need to do a vlog soon and I'll show you guys the flowers outside and stuff on that. But this one is just one where it slides open. And I've got inside of here little snips scissors that I love and then some stitch markers that they sent over that I don't know that you'll be able to see. But I love these. They're metal. They're super thin. They have them on their website. They are just one of my favorite little stitch markers to use. The other Notions tin they sent over is this one. A little sheep on it. I don't have anything in this one yet. The top opens up. I love these. I have a little, this one reminds me of an Altoid tin, like the tiny ones. It's about this size and it was Eric's and he finished the Altoids and I've had this for so many years. And I was like, can I have that? I was like, that would be perfect to hold my little stitch markers and progress keepers. <laughs> so I still use that thing to this day. So that's what this reminds me of. It's the, just the right size. And over some scissors which have a little case on them which is always nice these are gonna go in my cross stitch basket I'm gonna put them in there right now actually because these will be perfect to keep in there I have a little B progress keeper just love I have been loving bees lately I don't know if it's just getting into gardening and plants and all of the things like that that's given me just this new appreciation for bees then some of their snag free stitch markers which I love these I find for progress keepers I love the dangly pretty all the things stitch markers just marking my round or marking you know something beginning of round I love like the simpler the better that's why I love those little gold metal ones I just showed you and then these are so perfect just a little bead on them so nice I 
And they also sent me, I'm so excited to use these. I haven't, I don't have anything with cables going right now, but they sent me some bamboo cable needles. There's three different sizes and I can't wait to try these out. So I'm gonna have to do something with cables soon. So definitely head over, check out Twice Shared Sheep. If you are in the market for some new knitting, crocheting notions, they've got so many different options over there. Okay, so back porch fiber co sent over a couple of things this is going to be our giveaway for today so let me show you what she sent me first she sent me this project bag this is this is my jeep knitting bag because you, you know if you've been here a while i i knit in my jeep i knit in my husband's jeep we have another jeep now i should post a picture of that so i shared on sunday that it was a whole thing about going to church and Austin can't fit in the old Jeep and that's what Eric and Wyatt wanted to take and it was a whole thing but we did get an old Jeep it's a 96 I believe 95 96 I can't remember it's a little bit of a project Eric and Wyatt are working on it together and it will probably end up being Wyatt's first car he's got a little bit of time left before we're at that point <laughs> not long though really like He's so close to it, but yeah, they're working on it together and thoroughly enjoying it and having fun with it. So yeah, we're a Jeep family, three Jeeps now in the driveway. <laughs> so I'm always knitting in a Jeep. So this is perfect. And it has a little duck on the back. I love it so much. So I need to switch my Jeep knitting over to this. And she sent me some progress keepers with such a fun charm just like a simple classic looking charm on them so pretty and our other one we're gonna do for a giveaway on this episode so all you will have to do is comment down below anything any comment will enter you. This is the bag. This one is, this is my sock knitting bag. And they're just the perfect little drawstring bag. She has so many fun ones. If you want to head over and check out her shop. And there's also some progress keepers down in here. They just have like a little, little charms on them. There's three in the pack little beaded charms so yeah this will be our giveaway comment down below I will draw a winner on the next episode from those comments we have some more summer sock camp prizes that came in there are so many here <laughs> monster knits who did our logo this year she has a shop as well and she sent over just a variety of of progress keepers from her shop those ones say ssk knit two together We've got one that has a ton of little sock blocker charms these are so much fun this one's upside down but it's a christmas tree some cheese <laughs> I don't think all these are focusing and showing that well but there's so many here um there's some enamel pins so i'm just going to start throwing these in with our summer slot camp prizes as i get them shipped out which if you won one from the last like the first round of camp prizes that i drew drew draw draw <laughs> that I drew um those will be going out next week I was waiting on last people to contact me so I'll be getting those out next week all right I may have ordered more fourth of July yarn and I'm blaming this on Sarah of love sock wool in the most lovingly way possible because she showed this yarn on her most recent episode and I had to have it so I ordered these 
These are by Nanette Wake Studio, and this one is her patriotic colorway on her 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon base. Love it. And then this is the Patriotic mini skein set. Same base. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these. If I'm going to do like scrappy socks with these and then just some other socks with these. But I'm going to be casting on all of the Patriotic 4th of July yarn. I already did the scrappy stripy ones, Moon Glows. Now I'm going to be casting these on too. I should probably get a couple of other socks done first, but you know, I actually think I will do just plain vanilla socks with these, this skein. And then I'll do stripey, scrappy, something or other with these. Yes, that's what I'm going to do because then I can put these in my bag and knit them on the go for out and about they'll be my on the go knitting for that week around the fourth. And then the other ones will be what I'll work on at home. Cause I don't like doing things where I have to change yarn a lot when I'm in the car or out at a restaurant or something like that. So these will be cast on soon because the 4th of July is going to be here before we know it. One last thing. And this came from a viewer. She donated some things for prizes for summer sock camp. So we have, and it is, I believe I've seen these and it is a needle case. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I believe this is a needle case. It is so nice. So that is one of the things she sent. I was floored when I pulled this out. The fabric is so heavy duty. I don't know. It's so sturdy and nice. She sent over some yarn. These are knit picks. I think they're both knit picks. Yes. Are they both stroll? One is Muse. This is a 75% superwash merino wool and nylon. And then stroll. 75-25 as well. So she sent over these and then there are two books in here as well are these both this one's knit picks it's rock and socks colorful patterns by knit picks and then operation sock drawer by the knit more girls So that is amazing. I could not believe it when I opened that package. So many nice goodies in there for summer sock camp prizes. So I can't wait to do the next round of prizes. That'll probably be next week that I'll draw the winners. And a reminder about summer sock camp, there's full details in the Ravelry group, which is linked below. And then also on an Instagram highlight. And the prizes that I draw will be from the Ravelry group chatter and FO thread, and then the hashtag summer sock camp 2023 on Instagram. I think that's all for like the knitting stuff today. This is definitely a longer episode. Am I almost out of coffee? Yes. And it's for sure cold by now. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I still drink it anyways. All right. So reading and watching, I'm still reading on my Kindle the Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I think last night I was 80% done. So I'm close. I'm close. It's definitely um, all of the books that I read. I should say this. All of them are mystery, thriller, psychological thriller, suspense, that type of genre of book, I would say. Uh, this one, like the death, I almost said the life of Mrs. Westway, the death of Mrs. Westway. It's been a little slower, I think, compared to Ruth Ware's other books, but I'm still really enjoying it. It's just taking me a while to finish because it is a little slower and I read it before bed. 
On Audible, I'm still enjoying that by the way, I finished The Housemaid by Sarah Denzel. I liked that one. Was it like, oh, I love this book? No, but I liked it. It was good to listen to. Um, kept me interested. Then I listened to The Deceit by Sarah Foster. That one was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was just okay. It was an easy read. It was a shorter or an easy listen, I guess. It was a shorter book, so it went quick. I think it was only three hours and something. That yeah, was just okay. It was kind of predictable. I don't know. If you're looking for something easy to listen to while you're doing stuff around the house, I would listen to it, but I have not started another one. I finished that one two days ago and I just haven't had a chance to start the next one. So I don't know that I will today either. I might not get a chance until Monday, but hopefully I'll get another one started soon because I am really enjoying that, which is surprising me because I did not before, but I guess this is why you try things a second, second time. Okay. So life stuff. Oh, we're still watching Justified. I did write that down. We're still watching Justified. We are into the second season. I talked about that a little bit last episode, I think, that we had just watched one episode. Um, Eric's seen it before, but we are re-watching it because of the new season or the revival. Whatever they're doing with it is happening at some point this year, I think. So we are, we are, I'm watching it for the first time and he's re-watching it. Life stuff. It just, it feels like it's been a busy week. I don't really, there's nothing like major that's happened. We've had some appointments and like running kids places and just normal life stuff. But for some reason this week, since the last episode feels like it's been really busy and I don't know why it feels that way. Um, but it does. And I can't believe June is, we're coming up to the end of June. That's crazy to me. We were supposed to go see James Taylor in concert. I love James Taylor. We were supposed to go see him Wednesday and it got rescheduled for August. It's on a date we should still be able to go. So I'm happy about that. Got rescheduled because he had a really bad case of laryngitis, I guess, and was put on vocal rest. So totally understand the need for it to be rescheduled but I was bummed I was so excited and looking forward to that um but now I just get to look forward to it in August it'll be okay Father's Day was on Sunday we had a great day um went to church lunch relaxed it was just a, a great great day that's kind of all that's been going on but I hope that you all are doing well. Don't forget to comment down below for the giveaway. Hope oh, that's the Jeep knitting bag one. Where's the other one? There it is. <laughs> for the sock knitting bag from Back Porch Fiber Co. And I will draw, like I said, next episode, I will draw the winner for that bag. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this longer episode. <laughs> Hopefully you did. <laughs> and I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy making. Bye.